that was away from you. I don't know this guy from a can of spray paint. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is he a butler? Oh, <laughs> you get a cup of coffee. Mama to a tray. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He served me. That was a gesture of love. That says much about him, but it says much about his mom. But ultimately, it says a lot about his heart and the God he serves. If you really have love, it will. It will be expressed and manifested by what you do for other people. You know we're living in a time where it's all about us. You don't believe me? Go on Facebook. Now listen. Don't. There's nothing wrong with Shut up. No, it's not. Not preaching against Facebook. I use, it, I use it as well. But what I'm saying is that if you look on Facebook, you see a lot of people doing all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what they're doing? Uh, they are putting themselves on a platform and letting everyone know, look how different, look how better, look how stronger, look how cuter, look how whatever I am than you. If, you, if, if we were in God's face just as much as we was on Facebook, Oh gosh, our messages would be, you're in there, you're in Matter of fact, you guys would be doing all the preaching by what you do. Yeah. And you become by what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? Martin Luther King said this. He made, he made a quote, it's an incredible quote. He said that man has not begun to live until we can rise above the narrow confinements of our own individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of other people. Isn't that what Christ did? Why did God send Jesus? Not so Jesus can come down and be like, hey, Holy Spirit, me. No. He sent Jesus so that Jesus can give his life for other people. And that was an expression of his love. What am I telling us today? I'm saying this. That is what we do. We need to make it, we need to stop making it about us. Okay, you look good, you smell good, you're strong. Praise God. <laughs> but there's a whole lot of that God wants to do in our lives. And the reason why our love is waxing cold is because we're putting him on the back and we're putting ourselves on that platform. And then what we're doing is we're just getting just a residue, excuse me, just a residue of a blessing. Excuse me. But you're not getting the whole pot. And don't give me half of the sandwich, but I want the whole meal. I want the fries, I want the drink, I want the pack of ketchup, and a pan and apple. Give me two napkins, as a matter of fact, because I can just stop it. Especially if I pay for it. And I want two beers, a straw, and a pack of ketchup. Yes. I don't just want a little bit of it. Well, God is like, I want to give you more. I want to do more. I want to use you more. But your love is not where it needs to be. Your love is cold. It's not high. It's cold. <laughs> Pastor, let me know when, I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm, it's time to stop. Uh, I don't know why you're touching me for a minute. <laughs> to a place like this, some of that stuff would just naturally be there. You know what's a blessing? What is a, what's a blessing is when you have a, a, a child who goes to their mom and says, Mom, you ain't got to do that. I got you on that. Now, he just came from work. He probably had a hard day. Mom is, you know, just made him some dinner, and she's doing the dishes. And stuff. But he says, Mom, what can I do to make your life a little easier? That's what it is when you have the shepherd of a church. 
The shepherd should not be doing everything. Just like if you are married, guess what? If you're married, brother, you got to step your game up. Your job now is to make her life a little easier. You say, well, she ain't doing nothing for me. That's because you ain't doing nothing. You got to set that example. And there's, there's a picture of <laughs> Jesus Christ and the church. Well, Jesus wants to do a lot of stuff for us, but we first have to give him something to work with. When you give him something to work with, then he says, okay, let me uh, you know, get a little closer to you. And then you keep doing, and you're doing, and, and you're praying, and you're worshiping, and, you, and, you're, and you're reading, spending time in his word. You know what we're spending time in? We're spending time in TV, and music, and all kinds of foolishness. YouTube, MeTube, iTube, Facebook, and all that is talking in our ears, and we base our value and we base our prestige and our reputation on those things. But when it comes to the Word of God, look, nevertheless, what does that mean? Nevertheless means that's the reason why you ain't walking in the blessing, because nevertheless, we have to be people that spend time in His Word. Amen. Why? Because when you do, you find out who you really are. And whose you really are. Rather than picking up a book about five steps of how you can get a better body. You want a better body? Stop eating crap and go to the gym. You don't need a book to read. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but 